causes of differences between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance. Now, there are quite a number of reasons why a bank statement balance may differ from a cash book balance. In today's session, we get to discuss the reasons why. It is important that one understands these reasons as these go a long way in helping with preparation of the bank reconciliation statement. And we'll get started right now. Now, here are the reasons that we are going to discuss. We are going to discuss what we mean by standing order, direct debits, direct credits, bank charges, unpresented checks, uncredited checks, errors, and dishonored checks. On your screen is an alternative format for preparing a bank reconciliation statement. So as I explained the factors that cause differences between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance, I will be indirectly explaining this alternative approach to preparing the bank reconciliation statement. So let's get started. We'll get started with what we mean by the standing order. Let's say you have a debt to pay and you agreed with the lender that you will be paying him a monthly installment until the debt is cleared. So rather than you paying cash to the money lender, you decide to instruct your bank to deposit money on the money lender's bank account every month. What you've just told the bank to do is what we call a standing order. Now, this is not limited to just paying off your debts. It could extend to rent payments and other monthly payment obligations. A standing order is, therefore, an instruction given by a customer to the bank to pay a fixed amount of money to a specific person on a specific date. Take note that it is the customer of a bank that issues a standing order. So how does this make the discrepancy in the cash and bank balance to come about? Remember, in your day-to-day -day operations, you will keep posting to the cash book. When the bank goes ahead and implements the standing order, it will not notify the business owner about it. The business owner will only find out when they receive the bank statement, showing that some money has been deducted from the bank account to implement a standing order. This would mean that the cash book balance would be more than the bank balance by the amount of that standing order. In order to make the two balance, we adjust the cash book balance by subtracting the amount of the standing order from it. A standing order lies in the category of items that are debited in the bank statement but do not appear on the credit side of the cash book. In other words, money was removed from the bank but was not removed in the cash book. Because this money was removed in the bank statement, we go ahead and remove it too from the cash book balance. Direct debits. Imagine you have to keep paying electricity bills every month, but instead of you init initiating the payments, you decide to instruct your utility company to go ahead and always deduct money from your bank account every month whenever the bill is due. When the utility company goes ahead and obtains the money direct from your bank, this is what we consider as a direct debit. Direct debits are payments that have to be made such as electricity and water bills and they are paid in such a way that you don't ask the bank to pay the bills as it is the case with a standing order. But rather, you give permission to the creditor, in this case to your utility company, you give them permission to obtain the money directly from your bank account. This is useful if the amounts to be collected vary from time to time and since the amounts are determined by the creditor. Take note that with a standing order, if the amount to be paid out is to be changed, the client has to first communicate to the bank. With direct debits, it is the creditor who informs the bank of any changes in the amounts collectible. So how do direct debits cause a discrepancy between the cash book balance and the bank balance? Well, during normal business operations, when direct debits happen, the business only gets to know about the direct debit when they receive the bank statement, since a direct debit is something that happens in the bank without the business knowing. 
since some money has been deducted from the business bank account in the name of direct debit, it means the cash book balance is overstated by the amount of that direct debit. To make the bank balance to reconcile with the cash book balance, we deduct the direct debit amount from the cash book balance. As you can see, direct debits also lie in the category of items that are debited in the bank statement but do not appear on the credit side of the cash book. This is the same as saying money was deducted in the bank statement but it wasn't deducted in the cash book. That's why we go ahead and deduct that money from the cash book balance so that the two balances are able to agree. Direct credits. Sometimes a business may have debtors who instead of paying cash at the business premises decide to deposit the cash direct to the business's bank account. When this happens, the bank will go ahead and credit the bank account of the business. This is what we call a direct credit. However, the business itself will not know about this until it receives the bank statement. The bank statement will show that the business received money that has not yet been recognized in the cash book as received. This means the bank account balance will be higher than the cash book balance by the amount of the direct credit. To reconcile this, we go ahead and add the amount of the direct credit to the cash book balance. From what you can see, this lies in the category of items that were credited in the bank statement but do not appear on the debit side of the cash book. In other words, this is money recognized as received in the bank statement but is not yet recognized as received in the cash book. So that is why we add it to the cash book balance. Bank charges. Bank charges are simply fees charged by banks for services rendered. They include checkbook charges, ledger maintenance fees, among other fees. When bank charges are deducted from the bank account balance, the business will not know about this until they receive a bank statement. So when the business receives the bank statement, it will show a balance that is less than the cash book balance since these bank charges will have not yet been deducted in the cash book balance. To fix this, we go ahead and reduce the cash book balance by the amount of the bank charges. This lies in the category of items that were debited in the bank statement but are not credited in the cash book. Or in other words, money was recognized as deducted in the bank statement but was not recognized as deducted in the cash book. So we go ahead and deduct it from the cash book balance as well. Dishonored checks. During the course of business, a check can be issued or received. When you receive a check, it means you've been paid. And when you issue a check, it means you're paying someone. But issuing and receiving a check is only the first phase. In order to actually realize the money written on the check, the check needs to be presented to the bank. When you issue a check, you'll indicate in your books that you've given out money. Therefore, you'll credit the cash book. However, if the check is dishonored, it simply means that whereas in the cash book you've recognized that you've given out money, the bank has not deducted the money. In other words, money has been deducted in the cash book, but it has not been deducted in the bank statement. This would mean that the cash balance in the cash book is less than the bank statement balance by the amount on the dishonored check. To fix this, we go ahead and add back the amount of the dishonored check to the cash book balance. This lies in the category of items that appear on the credit side of the cash book but do not appear on the debit side of the bank statement. This is specific to checks issued. What about checks received? When you receive a check, you will indicate in your books that you have received money. Therefore, you will debit the cash book. 
However, if the check you received is dishonored, it simply means that whereas in the cash book you recognize that you received money, the bank has not recognized this receipt of money and so the bank has not credited your account with the money on the check. In other words, money has been added to the cash book balance, but a corresponding addition of that money on the bank statement balance has not been made. This would mean that the cash book balance is more than the bank statement balance by the amount of the dishonored check. To fix this, we go ahead and deduct the money on the dishonored check from the cash book balance. Now this lies in the category of items that appear on the debit side of the cash book but do not appear on the credit side of the bank statement. And this is specific to checks received. But why may a check be dishonored? A check may be dishonored due to one of the following reasons. Maybe there is insufficient funds on the drawer's account. Maybe there are differing signatures on the check. Uh, maybe the errors on the check, for example, amount in words is not similar to the amount written in figures. The other reason could be maybe the check that has been issued or received is stale. You know, checks presented to the bank six months from the date it was prepared that they become stale checks and they are dishonored as a result then you may find uh, maybe a check has, has been is a post dated check meaning it's not applying to the date when it has been presented so uh, then we also may have issues like the drawer may write a check and then maybe um, maybe stop the bank from cashing the check so these are just some of the reasons that might cause a check to be dishonored well, let's continue with um, the factors that cause the discrepancies between the cash book balance and the bank statement balance. There is what we call errors. We can have errors either in the cash book or in the bank statement. Now, an error is a misstatement or an unintentional mistake made in the books of accounts. Errors made either in the bank statement or cash book can lead to differences in the cash book balance and bank statement balance. Errors can be due to things like complete omission of an entry. They can be caused by recording an amount wrongly or recording a transaction on the wrong side of the account or wrong totals or among other causes. Now, when an error has been identified, we need to examine the effect of that error on the stated cash book or bank statement balance. Now, firstly, let's look at errors made in the cash book. If the error is such that it increases the cash book balance, we need to subtract that error from the cash book balance. Any error that increases the cash book balance makes the cash book balance to be overstated by that error. That is why we subtract it from the cash book balance. The same reasoning applies when the error reduces the cash book balance. If the error reduces the cash book balance, we go ahead and add it back to the cash book balance. An error that decreases the cash book balance makes the cash book balance to be understated by that error. That is why we add it back to the cash book balance. From the beginning of this session till now, the factors that have been discussed are the ones you deal with when adjusting the cash book. Now, some other items to, be, to consider may be things like interest income. That is another item that may appear on the credit side of the bank statement but not on the debit side of the cash book. Well, after all this is done, we can now go ahead and compute the adjusted cash book balance. It is the adjusted cash book balance that is eventually posted to the balance sheet. Take note of that. Take note that the cash book balance at the top is before adjustments are made. It is after the adjustments are made that we get a new cash book balance which we eventually post to the balance sheet. Now it's time to deal with the other part of the bank reconciliation statement. In this second part, we start with the adjusted cash book balance. However, at this point, if the adjusted cash book balance is still different from the bank statement balance, then we seek to reconcile the two balances. This takes us to more factors leading to discrepancies between the bank statement balance and the cash book balance. 
unpresented checks. When you're running a business, sometimes you may choose to pay someone, say your supplier, by issuing them a check. Issuing them a check means that they can go to your bank, present the check, and then they'll get paid. But sometimes you can issue a check and the person you issued it to has not yet presented the check at the time you obtained the bank statement. If the person has not yet presented the check, it technically means that you still have the money with you since the money has not yet been collected. When the check was issued, you went ahead and credited the cash book to recognize that you've given out money. But since the money you recognized as having given away has not yet been deducted from your bank account because the check has not yet been presented, this would mean that you still possess the money. And so the thing to do is to add that money back to the adjusted cash book balance. Uncredited checks. Just like the way you may pay some of your suppliers by issuing them a check, the same is true for some of your debtors. The debtors or other people may choose to pay you by giving you a check. When you receive the check, your role is to go present the check to the bank so that they credit the check to your account. However, if at the time you received the bank statement, the bank hadn't yet credited your account with the checks you had presented to them, then we consider these as uncredited checks. In other words, these uncredited checks represent money you have recognized as received in your cash book, but not yet recognized as received in the bank statement. Since the bank has not yet credited these checks, it only means that technically this money has not yet actually been transferred to your bank account. So what we do here is that we remove this money from the cash book, adjusted cash book balance. That is why we go ahead and subtract the uncredited checks from the adjusted cash book balance when constructing the bank reconciliation statement. And finally, we have the errors made in the bank statement. We firstly have to examine the effect of these errors in the bank statement. If the error in the bank statement is such that it increases the bank statement balance, then we shall add that error to the adjusted cash book balance. And if the error reduces the bank statement balance, we shall go ahead and reduce that error from the bank statement balance. In so doing, we are able to finally arrive at the bank statement balance. And that is it regarding the bank reconciliation statement so this explains the alternative format of preparing a bank reconciliation statement. In a nutshell, a bank reconciliation statement can be prepared by one of the following formats. The first format could be first adjusting the cash book, then thereafter you begin with the adjusted cash book balance till you arrive at the bank statement balance. Or you can begin with the cash book balance before comparing it with the bank statement then flow to the bank statement balance. Or you can do the reverse of this very method by beginning with the bank statement balance and arrive at the balance as per cash book before comparison with the bank statement. In our upcoming sessions, I'll be doing worked examples on the bank reconciliation statement. If there are any questions that you need to ask, please let me know in the comment section below. Like this video if you like it. Be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you've not yet subscribed. Check out other awesome accounting lectures on the channel. My name is Anul Dwanga Kuramia and this is Kisembo Academy. Take care.